At least nine people were killed in Nepal yesterday when demonstrators attacked police during a protest against proposals for administrative reform in the Himalayan country. Authorities imposed a curfew and mobilized the army to quell protest in the town of Tikapur, which is close to the border with India. South Koreans have welcomed the news that the two Koreas reached an agreement to end a standoff involving an exchange of artillery fire. Under the accord reached in the very early hours of this morning, after more than two days of talks, North Korea expressed regret over the recent wounding of South Korean soldiers, and Seoul agreed to halt anti-propaganda broadcasts. Two buildings collapsed during heavy flooding in northeastern Turkey yesterday, killing eight people. Two people were still missing and heavy rain continued into the evening. Turkish television showed cascading water knocking down trees and inundating houses and streets in the area. South Africa's currency has fallen to an all-time low against the US dollar. It briefly hit a rate of 14 rand to the dollar amid concerns about the strength of the Chinese economy. Economies that rely on the sale of commodities have been hit hard by the slowdown in growth in China. The problem was compounded when China unexpectedly devalued its currency earlier this month. Lebanese protest organizers have called for more demonstrations against the government this Saturday after two days of rallies descended into violence and forced the government to erect blast walls around its headquarters. The You Stink campaign has mobilized against the government's failure to solve a garbage disposal crisis, bringing thousands of people onto the streets. 